What's up guys? It's your boy Kittens coming back to you guys with a video talking about power level discussions in Magic the Gathering. And I, I there's so many different ways to scale it. I'll just say power nine, nine is the highest, zero is the lowest, right? So in power nine, how I think about it is what turn your deck expects to win on. If you can win on turn one, two, and three, you're playing in CDH, the competitive side, and even you know, like decks that are in fours and fives can still then, you know, play against those those higher level decks. A funny thing to bring up is my Lier, uh, Disciple of the Drowned deck profile that's also on the channel, where it has a lot of one drop instant interactions, where it might, it actually expects to win on turn eight to turn nine using extra turn spells from the graveyard. And honestly, it's just not that strong. Like the it just interacts with the board in such a way that it could actually play against decks that would be at that they expect to win on turn one, two, or three. Now, a deck that like that's trying to run something like Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation, you can win on turn one if you just pull the right cards. Even with tutors having enough mana to play both Thassa and Demonic Consultation. So that's how I think about power levels inside of Magic the Gathering. Just generically, what turn your deck expects to win on, you know, with, basically with no interaction. But like, what, how fast can you just end the game, right? Outside of that, you can also add aspects of, say, a power nine deck would be an un, two different sections, really, is to be an unlimited, anything's allowed, you know, four soul rings, four echo of eons, uh, four Black Lotus, four Sapphire, you know, four Moxes, you know, it just mocks everything, unlimited everything. And then the other side of it is the priciest, best, synergistic, 100%. It, instead of uh, instead of Howling Mine, you're buying Hammer of Burgeddon or something like that. That's sitting at like 80 or 90 or something like that. That's kind of the difference. Having both the Howling Mine plus the Burgeoning or Burgeoning, a uh, Burgeoning oh, was a bunch of really powerful cards to go into a, a extremely high tier deck as the upper echelon, the, the highest. You bought the Grim Monolith, not but not the Basalt Monolith. You you needed Grim Monolith because it comes out on for two CMC rather than the three. So that's how I think about Power Nine, the absolute you know Power Nine. Power eight is where you have your synergistic stuff, but you're basically you're, you're using your Howling Mind instead of the Hammer of Beauregeddon, or I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's like Hammer of something. It also gives everyone infinite hand size. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to buy that one for myself later on. But uh, yeah, so that's generically speaking how I think about power level discussions inside of, of the game. And I'm glad I brought up the Lier example. The Lier example is an example where it's a deck that really expects to win way outside. You know, it can go turn turn eight, turn nine. It should be able to just kind of end the game. And then, you know, the weird interaction side is someone could be trying to, uh, you know, replay a one card, two card combo through creatures and because the, it interacts with the board so much, my first three to four turns are literally just going to be, I'll bounce that, I'll bounce that, I'll bounce that. And, or, you know, because the Lier deck is um, vastly vapor snags. It's like a whole bunch of vapor snag effects. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. It's been your boy Kittens talking to you guys about power level discussions in Magic the Gathering. Peace.